Greetings. I shout hallelujah to my heavenly father for this opportunity again to bring you this session, the second part of my introduction on the series that I'm excited about that I want to deliver to you. The coming new world or the coming new age. In reality, the coming of the kingdom of God. First thing we're going to note today is that after Jesus had resurrected from the grave and was about to be taken into heaven, into the realm of God, the disciples were like, what's going on? Are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? Acts 1.6 says this, So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? They were expecting a kingdom, a kingdom and a physical king that will overthrow Rome and rule from Jerusalem to the ends of the earth. And you know the response that Jesus gave to them. He said, it is not for you to know the times that the Father has said in his own administration, but you will receive a power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and to the uttermost parts of the world. They were going to carry this message of the gospel under persecution without any political power. And that message has been carried to the ends of the earth now. And then he's going to come back with a physical kingdom. Point number two. During the Lord's Supper, we are just trying to establish the fact that there is a physical kingdom coming. And that indeed Jesus talked about this kingdom coming. He talked about this new world coming. He talked about this new age coming. And the glories, the abundance, the prosperity of this kingdom that is going to come. So during the Lord's Supper, this took place. In Luke 22 verses 17 to 18, we read this. And he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he said, Take this and divide amongst yourselves. For I tell you that from now on I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. So the kingdom is not only coming, they were going to be eating, there was going to be at least specifically from here, the drinking of the fruit of the vine, the drinking of Jews. There will be real life, real bodies, real pleasures, real happiness, real glory in abundance. That's when we will truly have life in abundance. Again, when we look at what we call the Lord's Prayer, we see this also communicated of a kingdom of God coming to earth. Matthew 6 verse 9 to 10, he says this, Pray like this, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name, your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So what we are saying is that the kingdom of heaven is the realm of God. It is invisible. But right now, as believers, we are in that kingdom in a spiritual sense as we carry the gospel and as we are persecuted. But our prayer is that God's realm and the realm of man come together. It's Jesus who said, pray this way, and this is going to happen. The new age is here. The kingdom of God is here in a little while. And then the spiritual and the physical will be united where Jesus will be the king of kings. As we turn to the book of Revelation, we see a lot of things happening, which things are already happening in the world right now as I'm speaking. There's a time element to it, and I'm not going to cover that time element now. Why I am so expectant, why I'm so confident that the kingdom is about to break forth. In Revelation 11:15, 15, 
Now let me give you a little background. There are seven seals. And as the seals are opened in the book of Revelation, we go to, to the seventh seal. And the seventh seal has seven trumpets with angels blowing these trumpets. And so we have the first to the sixth angel blowing their trumpet. And then we start here with the seventh angel blowing the seventh trumpet. Revelation 11, 15 says this. Note it very well. It is the verse of scripture that shows us the transformation of the world from the kingdom of men to becoming the kingdom of God. To answering the prayer we just read here, may your kingdom come and may your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So it says, then the seventh angel blew his trumpet and there were loud voices in heaven saying, the kingdom of the world has become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Christ and he shall reign forever and ever hallelujah hallelujah and he will reign forever and ever the kingdom of the world as we know it today after that seven trumpet will become the kingdom of God and of his Christ which means that Jesus is going to take over the world I've called it the coup de monde sometimes we talk about coup d'etat but this will be a coup de monde a coup a world coup where Jesus will take over everything and then we go up to Revelation chapter 21 we're going to go there and read it talks about the fact that as God takes over as Jesus takes over Heaven will be recreated. The earth will be recreated. Life as we know it now will change because we are stepping in to the kingdom where only righteousness reigns. No wickedness. So Revelation 21, we read from 1 to 8. It says this, Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. And there was no longer any sea. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride, beautifully dressed for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, a loud voice from the throne saying, come on, listen to me, people. Now the dwelling of God is with men, and he will live with them. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. Jesus had prayed, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. You will see God. If you have a pure heart, if you have repented, if you are born again, and if you live in obedience to the word of God, you will see God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain. For the old order of things had passed away. Or has passed away. He who, sit, who is seated on the throne said, I am making everything new now. He said, I'm making everything new. Then he said, write this down, for these words are trustworthy and are true. He said to me, it is done. I am Alpha and the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To him who is thirsty, I will give to drink without cost from the spring of the water of life. He who overcomes, he who overcomes will inherit all this. People, just hang on and overcome. You will inherit all this. And I will be his God and he will be my son. However, it says, but the cowardly, the unbelieving, the vile, the murderers, the sexually immoral, those who practice magic acts, the idolaters and all liars, their place will be in the fiery lake of burning sulfur. This is the second death. 
This is hell. Again, we read this. So that is the arrival of the kingdom. And then we see the arrival of the king. As promised here, Revelation 22, beginning from verse 10 to 15, it says this, Then he told me, Do not seal up the words of this prophecy, that's of this book, because the time is near. I won't seal it up. Let him who does wrong continue to do wrong. Let him who is vile continue to be vile. You can be whatever you want to be. But let him who is uh, but let him who does right continue to do right and let him who is holy continue to holy we are told in hebrews 12 of verse 14 that without holiness without holiness no one will see god don't think you will live in your field in your dirt and then you think you will see god no 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 without holiness no one will see god so you say if you're holy continue to be holy if you're doing what is right Continue to do what is right. And then verse 12, he says, Behold, behold, I am coming soon. My reward is with me, and I will give to everyone according to what he has done. I am the Alpha and the Omega. I am the first, I am the last, I am the beginning, I am the end. Blessed. Blessed are those who wash their robes, that they may have the right to the tree of life, and that they may go through the gates into the city once more again that's how you get into the city but there's going to be people who are outside outside are the dogs those who practice magic arts the sexually immoral the murderers the idolaters and everyone who loves and practices falsehood i jesus have sent my angel to give you this testimony for the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David, and I am the bright morning star. Those are the words of the king. He is coming. It is near. It's right at the door. Please repent. Be born again. Accept the message, and you will enjoy forever in the kingdom of God. Peace and blessings to you. Thank you.